I hope and believe that judgment will never be passed on a person solely on the basis of genetic information. I guess what I'm thinking. Again. I love it, I just can't get enough. I guess we can make it a quickie. Okay. Actually, it's such a nice night, we should do it on the deck. Oh, what about the neighbours? Yes, we, we should ask them, they might mention it. For perfect pork steak, think 622. Six minutes on one side, two on the other, then rest for two more before serving. Looks amazing, get some pork on your fork. Seems the old has now become the new, so get some genetically modified pork on your fork. It's brand new and it'll taste fantastic. And it looks tasty, doesn't it? Don't you want to get some for your family? You're listening to Northwest Public Broadcasting. Gene-edited meat produced at Washington State University is now ready for people to eat. Researchers say the technology could one day help reduce world hunger. NWPB's Courtney Flatt has more. Flames lick the sausage links as scientist Blake Foraker works on the perfect grill marks. So we smoked this during the cooking process, and so that's where you see the nice mahogany brown. That looks great. Right there. But these aren't your average pork sausages. Washington State University researchers made these from pigs whose DNA has been changed. It's the first time a university has gotten the okay from the Food and Drug Administration for people to eat gene-edited livestock. John Oatley is a professor of molecular biosciences at WSU. He used the gene editing tool CRISPR on five pigs. Genome editing with tools like CRISPRs can create changes in DNA that are changes that can and oftentimes do arise in nature. Basically, it's a shortcut. Oatley says CRISPR can take years off old school selective breeding. But he doesn't just want to make fancy new German style sausages. Oatley says this bioengineering could help lessen world hunger, especially as the climate continues to change. The conditions that we're asking food animals to thrive in, to be more resilient in, is much more difficult. Whether it's a reduction in the availability of water, a reduction in the availability of feedstuffs, pasture land, grazing land, increasing heat or increasing cold. Oatley says this process could produce livestock that can thrive in harsh conditions and still provide adequate nutrition for people. He says in typical breeding, a stud passes along specific genetic traits to its offspring. Well, the problem is only one male can be available for breeding purposes. But with CRISPR, Oatley is making more males who can pass along desirable traits. That involves snipping out a male fertility gene to make the pigs sterile. Then scientists take the stem cells from the main breeding pig and put them into the sterile pigs. That allows them to produce the same sperm as the stud. Now you have 10 males all making the sperm, carrying the elite DNA of that one male. That means more swine can better survive in harsher conditions, or whichever trait breeders want to pass along. Charles Long studies CRISPR at Texas A&M University. He wasn't involved in Oatley's research. He described it as cutting edge. The pace where we can make genetic progress using these new technologies of gene editing is vastly superior to the old-fashioned classical way. Long says the FDA approval process is slowing down research. Instead, he says the U.S. Department of Agriculture should regulate this. Lydia Garris agrees the process should go faster. She's a biologist at Highline College in Des Moines, Washington. And even though gene editing may sound scary, she says it's actually more ethical than traditional breeding, where bad traits can get passed along. Think pugs with trouble breathing. If we can improve the life, the health, the well-being of animals that are part of agriculture, and also we can reduce the number of animals that are producing a certain amount of food, then we can decrease the number of animals that are sacrificed in this process. Just to be clear, gene editing is not the same as genetically modifying organisms, or GMOs. Garris says it's a new tool to speed up a very old process and make it more accurate. And she says it's safe to eat. Her advice? To not be afraid of progress and to not be so skeptical of science and the intention of scientists. WSU is also studying CRISPR gene editing on cattle and sheep. And a goat study ended last year. If all goes as planned, Oatley says gene-edited meats could be mass-produced for people to eat in 10 years. I'm Courtney Flatt in Pullman. It makes me-